While the EU is also considering banning TikTok, I decided to make weekly longer videos to get my thoughts out about some important topics. Once upon a time, I tried to pitch my book called De-Urbanize the World. I haven't published it, but I tried to pitch it on kickstarter.com. And I got one pledge from someone and then the next day my project page was taken down for a breach of servers. Apparently my book was hate speech. Apparently arguing that cities are not the pinnacle of human civilization, but rather the ass end is somehow um, a breach of the wokest contract that we're supposed to have with the society. So there's an American artist, Michael Kerbo or Kerbao, who paints pictures of cities as though they were relics of the past. So the, the cities of the future are really relics of the past. What that means is he shows you paintings of dinosaurs roaming through desolate cities where no one lives anymore or cities underwater. Or uh, one picture that I liked a lot uh, is a painting of a city where the center of the city is a big hole, like a sinkhole, and all the, the buildings fall into it. I believe that our fundamental idea that cities are somehow the peak of human civilization is simply a completely wrong perception of what cities are. In the 1930s, there was a German professor, one of the few ones who joined the bad people's party in Germany, but he had stumbled upon another research that said that um, uh, someone had tracked the last names of people who moved from the countryside into the big city. And so he tracked what happened to these people after they moved from the countryside to the city. He found out that by the fifth or sixth generation, all, all of these last names that he had been tracking had disappeared, what, suggesting that they stopped having children. Now in those days, of course, the women who married got the last name of the husband, but he noticed that also these last names, after five or six generations, disappeared from the record meaning people simply die out. Cities are the end of people. So how it works is this. You have people producing surplus children in the countryside and they send their surplus children to the cities. And in those cities, at some point, those people, usually around the fifth or sixth generation, stop having more children and their last names, their lineages die out. So I want to, figure out why is that? Why does the countryside send its surplus children to the city? And also what, what is the real mechanism behind it that causes city people to stop having children? In the countryside is so, uh, very quickly the countryside will be saturated, meaning all the land that is useful will be used by people, right? Because they have more children. That means in a rural setting, in a rural society, only the firstborn son and the firstborn daughter can hope to have a farm. The firstborn son will usually, as, it, as is tradition in Europe, for example, will inherit the farm from his parents. And the firstborn daughter will be able to marry another guy who has inherited the farm from his parents. So the first daughter also gets the farm. But what about the third sibling? The second son or the second daughter? What about him? What about them? Well, there's no farm for them. There's no land for them. They cannot inherit a farm. Well, you might divide a big farm into two small farms, but then you have the problem, will the smaller farm be able to feed the family? All right. And I know in, uh, in the Western world today, we have, uh, uh, we have, uh, have a, an economy of scale where farms have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, but they're still operated by uh, a single family usually and their workers, their employees. The workers, by the way, they get paid, but they do not own the farm and so on. Right? So when you have your third child in a rural setting, what's, what's that child supposed to do? Now, usually the first, the second born son will be a farm hand helping his older brother on the farm, but the second born son will never have a wife. The second born daughter was sometimes killed in ancient Europe because she would either, uh, she would not have a life. She would not be able to find a man to marry and have a farm for herself because the oldest daughter would be able to marry, but the second born daughter could only be a prostitute. And they didn't want that. So, okay. So when you have too many children, at some point we start sending them to the cities. The cities were in Europe, 
in southern Europe, we had the, the ancient city of Rome was, uh, had a million inhabitants about 2,000 years ago, but the city of Berlin did not have a million inhabitants until around the 1850s or so, almost 2,000 years after the city of Rome did. So northern Europe started urbanizing very late, and that makes sense because in northern Europe, uh, it was cold, it was hard, the conditions were hard to live in, so we needed to do a lot of preparatory work before we could house so many people. So very quickly, of course, uh, around the time of colonialism and the industrial age, Europe starts to urbanize. We have a lot of children, but no land. They cannot live in the countryside. So we moved them to the cities. And in the cities, there are factories, factories where people were able to do some kind of work that gave them the money so that they were able to buy food and rent an apartment, right? This is why at some point in Europe, the cities were largely populated by 80% of the inhabitants were under 18 year old at some point. Why was that so? Well, you have all these surplus children being born in the countryside because the countryside is very healthy. They send their children to the city and those children will have to do something, earn some kind of living so they can keep themselves alive and eat and rent, right? And so strangely at some point, this is the reason why we in Europe used to have child labor is because our cities were full of young children. There were not enough adults to take care of them. And so the children were forced to do their own work. But now what then is the mechanism that prevents people who move to the city from eventually having more children? Why do they stop having children by the fifth or sixth generation when their last names die out from the, from the record? Narcissism. It's narcissism. I believe narcissism is, a, is nature's psychological mechanism that prevents people from wanting to seek contact with another person because a narcissist is in love with himself and doesn't want to seek out someone else to be with. Now in the countryside where people are sparse, people are rare, you can, you can walk for hours in the countryside and never meet another human being. And so people who are that alone, they have a desire not to be lonely. And so they will seek out other people and more, are therefore more likely uh, to have children. Whereas the people in big cities like New York City, Paris, London, and so on, just to name some examples in the West, they are always around a sea of other people. There are so many other people that a lot of people turn inward to save themselves as a sort of buoy trying to stay afloat in a sea of others. But these people, when they turn more inward or they focus more on themselves, they become more egocentric. They also become more narcissistic. And as this progresses, as the narcissism in the big cities, because I believe narcissism is in fact a big city psychological problem. When the narcissism in the big cities uh, begins to develop and grow at some point, more and more people will no longer have any interest in other people, despite the fact that they are around more people than human beings have ever been around. They are the ones, the city people, the city dwellers are the ones who lose interest in other people precisely because there are too many other people around. So they become more self-centered and self-focused and more narcissistic. So in the 1950s, an American researcher discovered something peculiar. He noticed that people on the LGBT spectrum, uh, gay people, lesbian women, when they have dates, the people they date, they tended to have very similar faces as themselves, suggesting that homosexuality is a disease of narcissism. It means that homosexual people, lesbian people, and so on, they look for partners who look a lot like themselves. And this is probably also the reason why when we see gay couples walking around town, it repels us. We are a little bit, uh, we feel a little bit disgusted by it, not because they are gay, but because they are such similar people. They are oh too similar. Whereas straight people, for example, are more likely to look for a partner who doesn't look like themselves. Uh, this has nothing to do with race, but actually with uh, your facial features. If your faces look too similar, you will probably not be interested in them. Uh, again, that is a disease of narcissism. Same with transgenderism. Transgenderism, I believe, is also uh, a disease of big cities because it is a disease of narcissism. Imagine you are someone who spends too much time looking at themselves on your selfie camera, right? And uh, you are a man, but you feel attracted to yourself because you're narcissistic. But the image you see of yourself, that's just you. It's your, your gender. What if you could dress like the opposite gender and look more like, say, a woman in this case? Then you can watch yourself in the camera as being the opposite gender. You 
So this is part two, a part of a longer video about why when people move from the countryside to the cities, their lineages start slowly dying out. And I was explaining in the previous video that this is because <clears throat> people stop having children. <clears throat> people who move to the big city stop having children. And I believe that the mechanism, the reason why that is so, is because people, despite being surrounded by millions of others in a big city, they actually increasingly lose interest in being with these other people. In other words, people become more narcissistic. I believe narcissism is nature's natural response to overpopulation. If you live with too many people, you become more narcissistic. You focus more on yourself, you lose interest in others, and you are therefore less likely to have fertile relations that produce children. And so I came to the conclusion at the end of the last video that perhaps the LGBT spectrum is itself also a disease of this narcissism, urban-induced narcissism. And so what that means is, is that uh, cities are the end of people. Cities are like sinkholes, population sinkholes. We send our surplus people when you have to, when a society has too many children that it cannot feed, you can send them to war, as I explained, or you can kill your children which does happen in certain societies, or you can do many other things, but one thing you cannot do is you cannot give them land. You cannot magically create new land where your offspring can live, so you have to send them to a city. And so I came to this insight that big cities that we see as the pinnacle of civilization are really the ass end of civilization. A big city that has all the technology, all the wealth, uh, beautiful architecture, uh, lots of food, in, delicatessens, right? intricate food, uh, you know, refined, uh, refined social events. All of that serves to soothe people who know or instinctively perhaps subconsciously know that they are going to live a less fertile life than their brothers and sisters left behind in the countryside who will have large families. And so uh, this is why, for example, in the United States, the Democrat Party represents the big cities and the Republican Party represents the countryside and the countryside is where they still have larger families, right? And these large families, they send their surplus children to the city, but the countryside is where you have the religious connection to having large families and Christianity and beliefs and so on. That is missing, increasingly missing from the big city where people become more narcissistic because narcissistic people also tend to turn away from God or maybe start seeing themselves as God. But either way, narcissism kills your desire to have a large family with someone else. So straight people have the sort of two flame principle where uh, a straight person wants to be with someone else whose face is somewhat different from their own based on the idea that two different people, two different flames can become one flame. Whereas narcissistic people, if they want to be in a relationship at all, they want to be in relations with people who look a lot like themselves, which is in fact what the LGBT community is all about. If you can, I, I spoke more about this in the previous video. And so, if I believe that cities are the end of people, I believe the cities of the future are going to be the relics of the past. Meaning that people are going to realize that uh, no matter the wealth, no matter the money, no matter the luxuries that you can get in the big city, they cannot afford you new land for the continuation of your lineages. Despite all these things, your status symbols, your power positions, all of that is just the trickery to keep you passive, meaning it's all distraction. It's all external distraction rather than internal fire. And so what I mean by that is big cities capture all the surplus people of a society and make them believe that they still have importance by giving them more wealth, People living in the cities, they make more money for the same job, for example, right? They have more wealth, they can go on vacations, they can eat fine food and so on. And all of that is just to soothe the pain of the fact that you are not uh, less, you're going to be less fertile than the people left behind in the countryside. We're talking about averages. And so, as I mentioned in the previous video, by the fifth or sixth generation of an urban lineage, they die out. They simply cease having children. You can see this process going on in the United States, in the Western world, Western Europe, London, Paris, New York. What do you see? You see a very large number of young people living in these cities who identify on the LGBT spectrum, saying that they don't want to have children anymore. So <clears throat> when we speak of replacement immigration also, keep in mind this is usually, the migrants coming to the West are usually from the countryside and they're moving to the cities of the West, meaning that they are starting their own process. 
the, the native uh, white Europeans have gone through this process a bit sooner. Uh, we started sending our surplus people to the cities or around the industrial age, right? Um, and there, the migrants coming from India and Africa, they're doing it now. Which means that they are going to start the same process and in five or six generations from now, their lineages will also have completely, completely died out in London, Paris, New York. So it's not so much a matter of a takeover. We should, we should not worry about the fact that migrants are taking over our cities. Cities are not the things you want to defend. The thing you want to defend, if you're smart about the future and, and be able to continue your lineages, is the land. You need to defend the land. It is only on the land where you can continue your uh, biological lineages. So cities are of no importance. Yeah, but cities are, that's where all the wealth and the money is, all the power, but they, none of that secures your lineage's survival. It is all trickery. It is all um, deception, really. And so what we should do, our people, the people of the West, knowing that we are already going through this phase where we are slowly being killed off, right? Uh, we need to realize that our future lies in the capture and defense of fertile land. And surprisingly, there is still a lot of land available, but only if you are willing to let go of the materialism of the, of the urban world. The subarctic region, regions of the Northern Hemisphere have a ton of woodland and that soil is extremely fertile. You could remove the trees and make room for pastoralism or for agriculture. Uh, or the regions, regions just below the subarctic region. There's, these are still very sparsely populated. Think of, uh, think of Sweden, even southern Sweden is sparsely populated compared to, say, uh, southwestern Germany, where the Ruhrgebiet industries are. And so Central Europe, Middle Europe is extremely densely populated, but Northern Europe, Scandinavia, and Scandinavia is about the size of Western Europe anyway, right, is almost empty, but it's full of fertile land and trees and so on. So the point is, there is a perfect opportunity to focus more on moving our healthiest people, our healthy stock toward fertile land rather than toward the cities. It doesn't matter if our cities are flooded with Africans and Indians because they're just going into that process where eventually they will die out. Cities are the end of people. I explained this in the last video. Lineages sent to the city will eventually die out. There's nothing to worry about that. There's no way that they can survive in these big cities. No one survives in the big cities. Only the people who escape the cities and focus on capturing and defending land, fertile land, will have a chance at promoting their, their, uh, their offspring through the ages over time. And this got me to a final topic of why in our modern society we, sw we seemingly switched from a man-oriented culture now to a woman-oriented culture, feminism the matriarchy, the, uh, kill the patriarchy, the future is female. Why is that? Well, it, it ties into this story that I've been talking about in this video and in the previous one. In the past, all women were able to have at least one child. So the women were all able to have offspring, but increasingly numbers of men were not able to have children. Jordan Peterson also talks about this. And so when you have too many men who cannot have children, they become angry, they become a burden to society, and that's why you have war. When two societies both have surplus males, you create a fake war in between, like a trench warfare where the men kill each other off. Perhaps this is what is going on in Ukraine and Russia right now, right? Perhaps they just have some surplus males, the society can't really take care of it anymore, and it just purge the males in a fake war. Have you ever thought about that, that wars are just the way, a way to purge men the unnecessary men. You remove them from society by getting them to kill each other. I mean, why, why go through the effort of killing your men if you can just get them to kill each other in a war? <laughs> right? This is how the elites think, and I'm just trying to introduce to you how elites really think. Right? So, but, in, so we, but in order to get the men to kill each other, you need to have stories of heroes. You need to give the heroes a statue and a movie in Hollywood, right? So to motivate these men that war is something they want to engage in so that they'll kill each other. But then why are we switching away from this man-oriented culture to a woman-oriented culture? Because the, women in the, the white women in the cities of the West are increasingly unable to have children. Remember, in the past, all women were able to have at least one child. 
So this is part three and the final part of my longer video about why cities are the end of people. I ended my last video, part two, discussing why our man-oriented culture has become a woman-oriented culture. And I explained that in the past, women were able to have one child minimum, meaning all women were able to have at least one child. Whereas society was dealing with increasing numbers of men who were unable to have children. Say you have 20% or 30% of men who are not having any children, not having families. They get angry and frustrated and depressed. They see no future. And what societies tend to do is, or two societies, when they both have this problem, they create a fake war and they send the men off to die. But in order to get the men motivated to start killing themselves off, you need to give these men hero stories. So in Hollywood, you have Hollywood movies where the man is the military hero or something, the war hero. And you give them statues and you give them Nobel Prizes and whatever <clears throat> to keep them feeling as though they are important when really they're not important. They play no role in the society of the future anymore. Now things have changed in our time in the Western world. You have increasing numbers of women who are also unable to have children, young women who either say they don't want children or are una unable to have children for whatever reason. Uh, so that is that explains the shift from the man culture to the feminist woman oriented culture, because now we have a lot of women unable to have children. They live dissatisfied lives. They are angry and frustrated. And so they now need to be soothed with the same tricks that we used to apply to the men. So it's surprising to me that feminist leaders, feminist women don't seem to understand this, that they are being tricked in the same way that men used to be tricked. So now in Ukraine, for example, or even in Israel, you see that these Western governments are sending their women to the front lines to kill them off. And so in order to motivate these women now to start killing each other off, surplus women, right, is to give them the hero stories and to give them the statues and the Nobel Prizes, basically to make them feel as though they are still important when they are not. They are not part of the society of the future. And so I came to the conclusion in all these, in these past two videos, this is part three, that cities are the end of people. Cities produce a form of narcissism that prevents people from seeking interest in, in, in the opposite sex, for example. This is why I also argued that the LGBT spectrum may be a product of narcissism, a disease of narcissism. But this is induced by cities, by the fact that you are living around so many other people, you become more narcissistic and you lose interest in other people, despite the fact that you are around more people than ever before. Now, Maybe this applies more to introverted people than to extroverted people, but it doesn't matter. The point is that narcissism and the LGBT spectrum are nature's natural responses to overpopulation. So the people of the future will be rural people, rural lineages that manage to transplant themselves from one farm to the next farm to the next farm, say that the children inherit the farm and the grandchildren inherit the children's farm and so on and so forth. Those lineages can last for thousands and thousands of years. But urban lineages, as I explained in the previous two videos, tend to die out by the fifth or sixth generation due to narcissism, <clears throat> due to the LGBT spectrum and so on and so forth. And the sheer fact that people just don't lose, lose interest in others and stop having children with them in overpopulated areas such as big cities. And so I was trying to explain that it doesn't matter that people from India and Africa and the Arab world are mass migrating to the cities of the West. We have already gone through this process. We are simply ahead of the pack in this sense. So things that are happening to us will happen to them later. Uh, during the industrial age, for example, uh, many white people sent their surplus children to the newborn cities of the West during the urban industrial area, right? And <clears throat> now we have reached the fifth or sixth generation and we start dying out in the cities. And so it feels as though we are being replaced Indeed, it is true, there is replacement immigration, but it is largely happening in the big cities, which makes perfect sense, because the migrants coming to our big cities, to New York, London, Paris, and so on, they tend to come from the countryside. These are the surplus children of those foreign lands brought to the cities of the West. And yes, they will have wealth and money and power and status and influence, but one thing they will not have, land. They will not have land where they can continue their uh, lineages. That means by the fifth or sixth generations, the migrants uh, moving into our big cities will also die out according to the same principle that I talked about previously. Cities are the end of people. They are population sinks where people go to die, but slowly. 
because city building is an alternative to war. You can send people to war to kill themselves off, or you can send people to the cities where you can slowly exploit their labor over five or six generations, and then eventually they will die out. Their lineages will still die out anyway. And so we can predict, we can make this prediction that white people, white people, the founding stock of our Western civilization, have already gone through much, much of this process, which is why the LGBT hits us so hard, our people. Uh, we are dying out, but only in the cities. And in the cities now, we can expect the cities of London and Paris to become 80, 90% foreign populations, foreign born populations even. Uh, imagine London being 90% Indian or Pakistani and just maybe 2% native white British. That's the future of these cities. It will happen to Paris and New York. It will happen to all the big cities of the West, Stockholm too, and so on and so forth. The thing is that those migrants are not going to be there forever. They too are going through the same process where the cities will make them more narcissistic and will eventually reduce their numbers. They will stop having children. They will also, their lineages will also die out. We are ahead of the pack in this sense. We are ahead, we are further ahead in this development. And for us, our people, our European type people, it is absolutely important that we start looking at the future. And the future means if you want your lineages to continue, you need to control and defend the land, fertile land. <clears throat> and so I was pointing to the subarctic regions of the Northern Hemisphere. This could be Scandinavia, Northwestern Russia, these massive woodlands that have extremely fertile soil because no humans have lived there in many hundreds of years. You might chop the trees away and make room for pastoralism, or you can do agriculture. Whichever, we, whichever it is, <clears throat> our kind of people will not be living in the big cities by the end of the century. And though that may feel as though we are losing power, we are actually winning the future. We are winning the future because it is only, as I explained in the previous two videos, only the rural lineages survive over thousands of years. Only rural lineages survive the times. The urban lineages, they all die out. So we don't have to worry about them. But they get to have the wealth and the power. Yeah, <clears throat> of course, if you have to huddle together with millions of others of people in a big city like Paris, you better have something to incentivize you staying there. So they give you wealth and power and luxury items and refined food. It's all a trick to keep you there in the cities. Get it? Get it? The more destitute the city, look at New York City, absolutely destitute place, right? But they give you four or $500,000 a year if you want to work as an investment banker, or they give you millions for doing something else, right? They give you that much money and wealth in order to keep you there. It is your incentive to stay in the city even though your lineages are dying out there over time. <clears throat> the people willing to let go of materialism, therefore, the people willing to let go of wealth and riches and understand that the only true wealth that exists in this world is fertile land. That's the only real wealth. Fertile land and fresh water is the only real wealth in this world. When we start focusing on that, we can then transplant our peoples, our healthiest specimen and families, further out into these fertile lands that are still available, widely available around the world on the condition that you let go of wealth and luxury and materialism. If those who are willing to do this, such as the Mennonites or some, uh, some, some kind of uh, really religious uh, cults, we can use religion as a force of renewal to, to fire, to rekindle those fires in our own hearts and renew our spirits and transplant our people all right, in places where we know they can have long-term lineages surviving through the ages. You can only do this on land. <clears throat> What I'm trying to explain is that European white type people were done with urbanism. We've gone through that process. We've reached the limit. Most of the white people left in the big cities will eventually die out. There's nothing to do about it. All we can do is make sure that our healthiest stock has access to fertile land. We need to move them out. <clears throat> so we're going to do the exact opposite of what everybody else is doing. Everybody else is still moving their people to the big cities and we're going to leave the cities because we're ahead of the pack, which gives us the benefit of looking around where we can snap up the best fertile patches of land. So <clears throat> to conclude my series of three videos then, <clears throat> uh, we're going to leave the cities. Cities are the end of people. We will eventually de-urbanize the world after all the lineages in the big cities have died out. We will likely never want to do this again. We will have like a cultural memory that will inform us that cities are bad.